Shalom and welcome to today's Middle East Report. In this program today, we'll be discussing the incredible work carried out by Magin David Adon, that's Israel's ambulance service in saving lives, and also remembering the 70th anniversary of the Hadassah convoy massacre. Well, welcome to the program. Uh, my guest today is uh, Reverend Mark Medley from uh, Christian Friends of uh, Magin David Adom. Uh, Mark, it's great to have you, Thank you on the Middle East Report today. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, and, and Mark, you've been involved with Christian Friends of Magin David Adom really since it was established, I think, what was that, back 2006, in 2006? Yeah. 2006. Mm -hmm. um, and can you share with us how MDA has grown over that time? Yes, we started back in 2006 with the vision of having one ambulance in five years, but the Lord blew that out of the water completely because on our 10th anniversary last year, we'd clocked up five ambulances, one blood mobile, and uh, renovating the emergency room at Kiryat Shmona ambulance station, so quite something really. Excellent. And, and how did you get involved in the work of uh, Mag and David Adon? It was funny actually because I decided I didn't want to be. I was speaking at uh, a rally in Manchester uh, to sort of give support to the Jewish people because it was the time of the Hezbollah conflict. And a Jewish gentleman said to me afterwards, I want you to work on a project with me to raise funds for ambulances. And I said no, and the Lord said yes. So I said to the Lord, but I don't do fundraising. And he said to me, you won't need to. If you just speak about it, I'll do the fundraising. And I think by what I've just said a moment ago about what we've achieved, I think that point has been more than proved. Excellent. And, and also, Mark, when it comes down to the work of MDA, and now this is very important in terms of uh, saving Jewish lives, saving Arab lives as well, um, is this something that stands out for you in, in the last over 10 years that you've been involved with, with this initiative? I think the commitment of MDA to look after anybody and everybody is what stands out. You know, they even deal with terrorists if they failed their attempts at blowing people up. They will still go and treat them. And I think that, to me, is one of the main things, is that they are very much uh, a peacemaking initiative uh, as much as an ambulance service. Oh, oh, and when we also look at um, MDA as well, what, what contribution have Christians made uh, to the work of MDA in, in saving lives in Israel? Christians have been donating to MDA for quite some time. Uh, I know friends in Scotland who've been doing it since the 1970s. But since Christian Friends of Mag and David Adam took off, I think there's been a much more channeled uh, giving programme that we've done. And that's bought not just from the UK, but from other parts of the world too, that bought ambulances. And that, to me, stands as a witness to the Jewish people of our love for them. Excellent. So let's have a look now at the work of uh, Christian friends of Mag and David Adon. Israel by supporting Magen David Adom in helping to save lives. Magen David Adom is so vital in a country so small. Actually, in Israel, every day there's an emergency of one kind or another. These people put themselves often in harm's way to save another life. And of course, as Christians, we believe in the saving of lives. It's important that there be a preparation and that there always be a readiness to provide the care that is needed. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm so impressed with Magen David Adon, their almost instant response to any situation. Christians have an opportunity to help the Jewish people save lives. I know as a Christian, Jesus, his purpose is to save lives. Every man, every woman, every child is made in the image of God. Life 
is so valuable to God. It should be to us as well. A Gandhi Vida Dome is always there to put that arm around them and to minister to them both physically and emotionally. I've got kids, I've got grandkids, and I think about my own children. And I'm so thankful that Magen Vida Dome is there for them to save their lives in a critical situation. Your voice will go a long way in building relations and lifting Israel up. Saving a life is about being our brother's keeper. It's about making a difference. It's all about having purpose. It's about working together. It's about choosing life rather than choosing death. It's prayer in action. We pray that you will support it and get behind it. So we want to bless Israel in practical ways. And again, David Dome is one of those organizations that deserves our support as Christians. There are many ways that you can support Magen David Dome through Christian Friends of Magen David Dome. We can give our time and energies, we can give our money. And you can give blood. You can come to Israel and participate in some of our saving operations. There's an old saying in the Jewish world that if you save one life, you save the world. Your support today is vital. Join us in blessing Israel. And MDA do an incredible work in, in saving uh, lives in Israel, not only Jewish lives, but also Arab lives as well. And I suppose that's something that I, I'm impressed with. I mean, I've done a few programs over the years with, with MDA, Mark, and the one thing I've been impressed about is, the, is when I've actually interviewed some of the paramedics that uh, are working in Israel with MDA, um, their, their professionalism, their dedication, uh, and also their desire to help anyone who's injured, even terrorists who have committed appalling acts of terrorism in Israel. Um, they don't care, uh, they just care about preserving the sanctity of mm. life. Uh, and that's something that is unique to the, to the Jewish character, isn't it? This whole em emphasis on Chaim, which is life and to preserve Indeed. life. Mm. How much does that play a part in the, uh, in the ethos of uh, MDA? I would say it's right at the centre of it. Perhaps to illustrate this, there's a story a few years ago, I was due to a meeting with MDI and I was late. So I jumped in a taxi in Jerusalem and just said to this driver, I'm late for a meeting. And he said to me, don't worry, I drive for MDA. And he was an Arab Muslim from East Jerusalem. And so I said, what, why? He said, well, he said, I think it's important the Jews have their Shabbat. He says, if I can park my taxi Friday night till Saturday night and go and drive an ambulance and help, then I'm doing my bit to support what's going on in Israel. And I think that was an amazing story, really. I've told that many, many times. So I questioned him and said, do you ever have any trouble going into an Orthodox Jewish home then, like Mayor Sherim? And he said, never. I said, oh, I said, do, do Jewish paramedics have trouble going into Muslim homes? He said, never. He said, because the whole message of MDA is we do treat everyone. He said, that's instilled in us from the beginning. He said, and we abide by that. He said, and, and he, he went, went on to talk about how that brings unity within Israel between different communities. And certainly, I uh, remember at Beersheba not so long ago, there was uh, a lady who was obviously Muslim because she had a headdress on, but she was there laughing and joking with the Jewish people. And it's a picture that I do wish would, you know, the sort of secular media would get out there that actually it's not all chaos in Israel. There are people really working together and saving lives together and doing actually what we should be doing. No, absolutely. Uh, and can you share some experience you've had of, uh, of seeing the work of MDA, or as the Israelis like to call it, MADA, uh, yeah. uh, first, uh, first hand when, when there's been a, an accident or an incident in Israel? Yes, uh, MADA quite like people who volunteer for them to actually do an ambulance shift so that they get to see what goes on. So I've done three now, two in Tel Aviv and one in Jerusalem. And the first thing I want to say is I found the most incredible welcome from the crews and people in the stations because they love it that you care about them and that you want to see what they're doing. And their life-saving techniques are quite phenomenal. I believe they're some of the most advanced in the world. And certainly I've seen some amazing things be done for them, as long as the routine stuff as well, you know, like an elderly person needs to transport into hospital. But the kind of equipment they carry on their vans, I believe outranks what we have in England at the moment. And that's quite amazing to think what they can do. So, for example, if somebody is in a very serious accident and they need minor surgery, it's possible for an MDA crew to be able to do that with a video link to a surgeon who's based in one of their offices somewhere miles away. Uh, and that obviously brings the operating theatre to the roadside. 
I mean, sadly, Israel's history is that they've needed to be able to do that kind of thing because of all the wars and conflicts they've had. But I think that's now paying out in civilian work too, in uh, helping people at every possible turn. I have to ask you, what do your provisioners think of you? Because uh, not only uh, do you wear the, the British uh, and Israeli flag mm. together and uh, your support for Israel it is unquestionable, Mark, but how, how do they feel at your local parish here you are being a representative uh, and working for Mike and David Adon? I'm very fortunate, actually, in that my parish church, and this is not usual, uh, is quite into Israel, and particularly since I've arrived, because they've learned that it's all scriptural. You know, we're not doing something because we fancy helping a country. We're doing something because it's on the Lord's heart. And so I have a tremendous amount of support. They don't mind me going to Israel when I need to do. Uh, they're very keen to hear feedback on where I've been and what I've been doing. And there's a lot of love and attention given to me because of this work. And it's great to have that kind of support. Fantastic. So what does it mean for Israel and the Jewish people, uh, for example, when Christian friends of Magdalene Davidom raise enough money for, say, a new, a new ambulance? They're amazed by it, actually, because there's still, sadly, in Israel, a lot of people that think the Christians hate them full stop. And so when they come across people like Christian friends of Megan David Adam, who are making a very solid statement that actually, no, we do care and we do love you, it opens up the most amazing conversations as to why. And I've had some tremendous conversations about why Yeshua is important with Jewish people, and they're fascinated because they don't understand otherwise why we will be doing it. I mean, why not go help some other country? So it does bring a message of love and hope to them that there are still people that care and not everybody hates Israel and not everybody's anti-Semitic. Absolutely. Uh, and Mark, also, uh, your latest campaign is to uh, raise enough money for an ambulance to mark next year's 70th Indeed. anniversary of the uh, Hadassah convoy massacre that occurred in April of, of 1948. Um, can you share with us um, this, this project and your desire to raise this money to have an ambulance um, in, in order to mark this very sombre occasion in Israel next year? Yes, indeed. Um, it came to our attention that next year was the 70th anniversary of a convoy that was going to Mount Scopos and was attacked uh, and two ambulances were lost and uh, from memory 80 people were killed, you know, doctors, nurses and so on. And what is often not put out there is that the British seem to either have a hand in it or not do enough to stop it. Views differ on that one. So we felt what better way to mark our love and support for Israel than to say, well, OK, you lost at least one ambulance. We're going to put one back on the road. Obviously, it's not a like for like because technology has moved on. But it's a symbolic act on our part to kind of really say sorry on behalf of the British people for not doing more at that time to protect that convoy and to say we want to put this right uh, as best as we can before the Lord. Uh, so I suppose, in a sense, it's an act of repentance, really, but um, it's also an act of showing that times have moved on and there is a good link between Britain and Israel now that we want to foster and promote. Absolutely. I mean, this came during the uh, British Mandate years, just prior to yes. the re-establishment of the State of Israel yeah. on the 14th of May 1948, so literally just under a month mm. before the uh, Jewish state was re-established. And also the fact that um, this uh, the massacre took place, the dominant number of those in the convoy were paramedics, yeah. they were doctors, they were nurses who were just massacred in cold blood, many of them have, have, having their, you know, being mutilated and having their heads chopped off and what have yeah. you, so, which went completely against the Geneva Convention Absolutely. because, mm. um, you know, under the G rules of the Geneva Convention, you're not allowed to attack medical units. That's absolutely right. And again, that then raises the question, why were the British not doing more? Because obviously we're signed up to the Geneva Convention and really it should have been avoidable and wasn't. So, like I said earlier, we just want to kind of do something as a token gesture to say we care about what happened, we care about our past, and sadly we have to own our past and do what we can to put it right. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is, I'm um, going to have a look now at uh, this video presentation that was done to remember the horrendous um, a massacre that occurred uh, when the convoy of medics and doctors known as the Hadassah Convoy Massacre took place back in April 1948. Thank you. 
It happened on Tuesday, April 13th, 1948. The convoy to Mount Scopus that day was made up of two armored cars, two ambulances, two buses, and three supply trucks. Dr. Yasky was in the first ambulance. He sat exposed in the front. The road was suspiciously quiet. Even the Arab grocery store on the corner was closed. All of a sudden, there was a huge explosion. A mine went off creating a deep ditch. The first car slid into it. That's how it all started. Bullets came through the windows like hail. There was constant shooting and yelling. The British knew but did nothing. Dr. Yasky turned and said goodbye. A few minutes later, he was hit by a bullet and fell out of the ambulance. It felt like it went on forever. At first, we kept them from approaching with a few pistols we had. But then they started throwing grenades and flaming gas rags, and the buses went up in flames. Dasa convoy massacre took place on April 13, 1948, one month before the declaration of the State of Israel. This remains the single largest terrorist attack in the history of the modern state. 78 doctors, nurses, patients, staff, and students were slaughtered in the massacre. May their memories be for a blessing. יהי זכרם ברוך. Beautifully remembered there. Um, sadly, those uh, lives that were taken so needlessly uh, need to remember as we approach the 70th anniversary of the Hadassah convoy massacre. Uh, Mark, I, I think what was so shameful in this is that many is uh, Israeli historians are saying that the British knew about this mm. and uh, also some British officers helped with the logistics of this in order to make sure that those Arab terrorists didn't attack British soldiers. Yes. Uh, mm. And so therefore this is a kind of shameful act that's happened under British control and the British could have stopped that or certainly been um, certainly given intelligence out to to have better roadblocks and uh, more troops on the streets. 
but uh, sadly it is what it is today and that's why I think it's time that the British government uh, on behalf of the uh, doctors and nurses who work for Hadassah to, to seek uh, 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 official repentance on behalf of the government for this. But also, I think we also then got to hold the, the Arabs account who actually carried out this dreadful mm. attack because not only was it uh, uh, an absolute horrific attack, which didn't describe in that video, but the doctors and nurses, they, they were all stripped naked and had their heads chopped off yeah. and their bodies were mutilated. So, you know, this is something which is a shameful history and, and described in that video as well as the biggest terrorist attack that Israel's ever had to date. So I'm sure that Israel will be remembering this and maybe the British government needs to do something uh, as well on this. I think it would certainly help because it is a real blot on our history of our dealings with Israel. And, uh, you know, what we do is an act that we're doing as Christians, but it isn't the same as something that the government could do, definitely. And I would like to see something more positive done than you know, than is uh, a present, which is virtually nothing, uh, I think. So. Yeah. so surely something like this, it, it's good to let people know uh, yeah. about what about the uh, Hadassah convoy massacre. Also, the opportunity then to allow our wonderful viewers to write to our political representatives, our MPs on this issue, and including the Foreign Office, to say, will anything be done to mark this occasion when it occurs in April the 13th in uh, 2018? I would certainly hope that your viewers could uh, write to the Foreign Office and to their MPs and just say, please, can something be done to mark this? Because uh, it does need dealing with, you know, it remains in our history. And I think as Christians, we know that unless something is properly dealt with before the Lord and properly repented for, then it remains the same. Uh, and that's quite worrying, actually, because the Lord holds us accountable for those things. And speaking as a British person, I'm ashamed of what happened, and I would like something done you know, I mean, I'm playing my part with the replacement ambulance, but it's not enough. And also, uh, at the time, um, there was a warning given to um, Hadassah Hospital, which is based in Mount Scopus, which um, is a, a, a beautiful university campus mm. up there. Mm. Uh, the Hebrew University is based up there, and you see uh, incredible panoramic views of Jerusalem from there. Uh, and to think that this um, convoy was, uh, you know, included doctors, included nurses, including patients, and also urgent medical supplies yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And to say that this was attacked was, was horrendous because also Hadassah Hospital was given warnings that the, uh, the Arab terrorists as well wanted to target Hadassah Hospital to, to erode the morale of the uh, Jewish residents of, of Jerusalem and also to prevent those who are injured from being being treated uh, and what have you. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, um, it's important that, that we remember those those lives that were so horrendously cut short. Absolutely right, yes. It's got to be remembered. I mean, there is a dedication each year for it, but uh, I think when the big anniversaries come around, like 70, uh, it is a chance to really focus on it and think this is still not properly dealt with and to make it a much bigger event than it could be, yeah. Uh, and how far have you got so far with, with raising funds for the, the ambulance that you want to mark this occasion for by giving it to MDA and also Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem? I believe, at last count, we're on about £25,000, but we need 60000 So if I may be cheeky, can I say to anybody out there, even £1 would really help us uh, you know, to just kind of get towards this target figure we need. Uh, and what um, impact do you think this will have on um, Hadassah Hospital, MDA uh, and also the Israeli government and the people of Israel uh, to know that Christian friends of Mag and David Adom have donated an ambulance as a kind of act of reconciliation, an act of forgiveness to rewrite history 70 years on? Well, I'm hoping and praying that it will be quite a dramatic effect and that they will understand that we as Christians know we need to say sorry and it's no good saying, well, actually, I wasn't born 70 years ago, which clearly I wasn't. But actually, I do own the past of my country. And uh, I want to stand alongside you and say I'm sorry for what my country's done historically. That, I think, uh, works well in terms of goodwill. But I know they will be very, very grateful for it because every ambulance is obviously a blessing to them. But when it comes to that kind of love and repentance and respect for them, then I, I do know from my conversations with them that it means a lot more than you know, uh, other things that we could do.
And what would you think this this means uh, for Israel? I mean, um, I mean, this year has been an extraordinary year in terms of remembering key anniversaries sure. in, in Israel's history. Uh, we, you know, look at the Balfour Declaration. Yeah. We also mm -hmm. look at the 50th anniversary of the liberation and unification of Jerusalem, uh, and uh, there are many others that we can remember. But next year it will be the 70th anniversary of the nation of Israel being reborn. And also, as part of that, I'm sure that Hadassah Hospital and the Israeli public will be remembering the um, Hadassah convoy massacre as well. Uh, so what does it mean for the Israeli people to know that we know about this and that we're giving publicity to it uh, and NDA are also helping to raise an ambulance? Uh, what kind of me message do you think that sends to the Israeli people in terms uh, of uh, friendship between Christians and Jews? I think it says a strong friendship. What surprises me still is how many Jewish people just think everybody's anti-Semitic that's not Jewish. And uh, it's quite a battle sometimes to convince them that actually they have more friends than they realize, but sadly a lot of friends of Israel keep their heads down for a quiet life. So to do this is a public statement of saying you do have friends elsewhere, you do have people that love you and care for you, and we do have people that dare I say, not just pretending to love you, but actually doing something to prove that we do. The initial challenge with CFMDO came because the Jewish chap I mentioned said, why don't you Christians put your money where your mouth is? You're always talking about helping Israel, but what are you actually doing? Now, clearly, he didn't understand the importance of prayer, but uh, I think he had a point as well that with the ambulances, there's a tangible thing there to say, this is a gift of love for you that we really want you to have and treasure. And it will begin to filter through, as it already is doing, uh, to the Jewish people that you know we do care a great deal, and it opens up conversations between Christians and Jews, which I love, you know, because we're then we're able to explain why do we do it. Well, our Saviour was Jewish, you know, Yeshua was Jewish, and so we are carrying on His work in supporting you, as we would imagine He would do were He standing here physically today. So. The messages are strong, uh, they're important, and they do actually go a lot further than I think people would realise. Absolutely. Uh, and also we've got to remember as well that um, as, as we look at the work of MDA, that it's important to uh, make awareness that this is not government funded. Uh, not at all. Unlike no. the NHS, which mm. are our own uh, excellent ambulance service and excellent paramedics and doctors and nurses all funded by the British government mm. as part of our taxes. Uh, in Israel, it's different because of Israel's huge uh, defence budget yes. uh, that takes priority. So how is Israel's ambulance service, which is the lifeline of uh, Israel's medical services, uh, uh, funded? It's funded almost entirely by donations or fees. So, for example, if you call out an ambulance, you get a bill for it. It's not hefty, but there is a bill. Uh, the rest of it's all done by donations. Whereas, obviously, as we know, the NHS, for which I have immense respect, and I wish to put that on record, uh, I have immense respect for our NHS. They are government funded, so it's a very different ball game. But basically, without donations, then MDA wouldn't exist. They wouldn't be able to do anything that they do do. Uh, most of it, as you would expect, comes from the Jewish community around the world, but uh, the growing input of Christians is quite exciting. Excellent. Uh, and also, what's the type of training that uh, uh, an Israeli paramedic would have to go through? Because, uh, you know, when you think of being a paramedic in Israel, you know, they don't have to only deal with, like, car accidents or routine um, uh, medical emergencies such as heart attacks or others, but they have to respond to rocket attacks, mm. they have to respond to terror attacks. Uh, uh, and how does MDA prepare their paramedics to deal with, say, a terrorist attack? From what I understand from the paramedics I've worked with, there's a basic three-year university course, probably similar to what we have here. But then in addition to that, there is uh, all kind of psychological training of how to deal with terrorism and so on. Sadly, a lot of them have grown up with it, so they're half prepared for it in a sense. But there's always the chance that you're going to get called out to a terrorist who's hurt one of your family. And I believe that happened not too long ago. And the chap that was called, there was a relative injured, but the terrorist was more injured. And his first priority, therefore, had to be the terrorist. And he found that quite hard, needless to say. But the training kicks in that they're a professional organisation. They help anyone and everyone. And they have to prioritise, just as we would at a road accident, for example, in this country. So psychologically, there's a lot of preparation there and helping people to understand how to react. And I think I'm right in saying from what I heard from one of them that they are actually tested on their ability to cope with that. So they know they're not just going to crack up at the scene. 
And, and also, you have many um, Israeli soldiers, both men and women, who are doing their either two or three year national service in the IDF, also volunteer for MDA. They well. do, yes, they do. And obviously, their skills are phenomenal because uh, being fresh in the army, uh, they're bang up to date with terrorist threats and so on. So, they prove very, very valuable. I think a lot of uh, people in Israel are proud to serve MDA. And I've come across many a people doing ordinary everyday jobs who give up one shift a week to go out and serve on the ambulances. So for example, I had a hotel receptionist when I had a group there once who shot out one Friday to go do an ambulance shift. And that, the advantage to that, of course, is that it means that in most hotels you have at least one paramedic sitting around doing another job should one of your party be ill. But uh, MDA, people are very, very proud of it. And in a recent survey, they came out as the second best organization in Israel. People were most impressed with the army, the IDF, and secondly with MDA. And they got a score of over 80%, which I think says a lot, really. Um, and I, I'm very proud to wear their uniform when I'm with them in Israel. And it is incredible how people treat you. Even when they realize you're a foreigner who's volunteering, they still think, you know, you're with MDA. Uh, it's great. And, um, you know, I'm not surprised that people want to work with them. A lot of uh, school kids, age, I think it's 14 and above, volunteer with them. You know, things like moving stretchers or carrying bags, not doing, you know, the medical stuff, obviously. But that then knocks on that their interest is sparked in becoming a paramedic, and so they can recruit that way as well. Very good. Let's have a look now and see uh, what uh, Israeli paramedics working for Megan David Adom have to go through in terms of the terrorism threat that's posed to Israel. We have to realize that in this job, not everyone survives. And we take it with us when they don't. People were screaming and shouting, and there was chaos all around. The whole time we were taking care of the patients, I was really scared that someone I know would walk off the bus. This is, you know, I take this bus line all the time. I remember there was um, this girl, and she looked around my age. She, her clothes were burnt, and and her hair was burnt. And, and she was screaming, and she was in a lot of pain. Her image really stuck with me. She was just on her way home and didn't expect this to happen. Uh, I remember coming home, my parents knowing that I was at this scene, and get, my mom was actually in the States on business, so my dad was home and he just gave me this big hug. And are you okay? How do you feel? And you just don't know what to say. And then the next day I went back to work. <laughs> was just total, total chaos. I've been to a lot of events, but nothing was like this because the attack was spread out over so much distance and everything was really just happening. No one knew where to go or where to even start. So we started with the first person we saw, um, which was a man about in his 40s, sitting on the sidewalk, surrounded by people, bleeding, just an incredible amount of blood. Um, and he noticed it was coming from his right shoulder. And he's sitting there so calmly and he looks at me and he says, don't worry, I hear other people need help, go to them, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I said, 
you're not fine. You know, this is, you need help, you need immediate help. And he said to me, no, 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 the guy just hit me in the back, but it, it's fine, I'm okay. Um, and then I picked up the corner of his shirt to show him and his face was just, he just dropped and right away we started treating him, getting him into the ambulance. I think about my patients all the time. It's hard, it's, it's a really hard job. גבר יהודי כבן 40 נדקר בידי צעיר ערבי בן 20. was dressed with white shirt and uh, black vest and the whole shirt and his vest was full of blood and he was standing in front of my motorcycle and the second I saw him he was kind of kind of shocked he didn't know exactly what happened and right away I came over to him and I told him tell me what happened what going on over here in the scene he said I don't know I just went to the store over here to buy some drinks and somebody stabbed me and during that time, uh, we were all, we try, I we put some band-aids on his uh, cuts and wherever he got to wounded. And then the ambulance came and we rushed him into the, in, uh, the ambulance and right to the intensive care to take care of him. And the man was stabbed only because he was an Israeli guy that was just walking around, bought some drinks and only thought that he was an Israeli guy. Uh, the ironic thing was that the second that the man was rushed to the hospital and I took all my equipment and I put it into the, the bag in the back of my motorcycle, I saw the sticker over there and the sticker over there says that this motorcycle was donated in pe people of Belgium, the memory of the people who killed at the Jewish Museum in Brussels. At that time, at that second, I felt that you see over here the ability of people to get around the world against the terror. You see people in Europe donated a motorcycle in memory of people who killed in a terror attack. And with that motorcycle, just now, I saved life of somebody who just was attacked with a terror attack in Perch Tikva, in Israel. שמונה קצת אחרי השעה עשר בבוקר בתפר שבין שכונת ארמון הנציב לג'בל מוכבר. I find myself waking up in the middle of the night after coming to bed after I kissed all my children and realizing how much it affects me. One of the scenes which I think affected me the most you were in the hospital delivering a patient to the hospital's bed and all of a sudden there came another pager massive casualty incident a multiple casualty incident was a shooting incident and another shooting incident in two different areas in Jerusalem. I quickly arrived with the intensive care unit to Almona Nativ, where we found the bus with the wounded people lying around. And there we had to treat the patients and all the chaos and all the wounded people over there. We had to quickly give them a help and aid them. And I'm very happy that we managed to save also over there again some few lives also. <laughs> I always say that this job is the best one and the worst one because when you're saving a life, it's the best thing ever and there is nothing in the world that can replace that feeling. But sometimes you can't save everyone and the people you didn't save, they walk around with you for a long time. ההרגשה של הצלת חיים היא סיפוק רב, היא דבר שנותן לי את היכולת לקום מחדש לבוקר נוסף. I will finish a day on the ambulance so happy and so fulfilled that I helped someone, that I did one little thing to, to make someone else's life a little bit better. 
there is a tremendous amount of satisfaction in living the Vida Dome and I feel so lucky to be a part of it. And that gives us an incredible insight into what uh, Israeli paramedics working for MDA have to deal with. So please do keep them uh, in your prayers because uh, they certainly need it. Uh, I found those testimonies and those interviews absolutely extraordinary um, to think that, you know, this is what they have to do on uh, sometimes on a, on a daily basis mm -hmm. in Israel. Um, and that's dealing with these... Uh, mass casualty, terrorist attacks, knifing, stabbings, car attacks, rocket attacks, uh, and yet they're so dedicated and so professional in, 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 saving, um, in saving lives. Uh, doesn't it make you proud to be part of MDA? Oh, absolutely. I am so proud to be part of MDA. They're a terrific organisation. And to repeat what I said a moment ago, I love wearing their uniform and being associated with them publicly. I'm not ashamed of it at all. I think for me, one of the comments in there that speaks the most is the girl that says, and the next morning I went back to work. I think most of us, to be involved in a terrorist incident, we'd want a week or two at least to recover, whereas they've just got to get on and treat the next patient. And obviously, terrorism one day, delivering a baby the next, that's the true life of an MDA paramedic. And also, I think something that's, that's overlooked when it comes to Israel, that uh, I know this was the case a few years ago, I don't quite know the case now, but the majority of those... Um, uh, who have injuries and suffer loss of life comes from Israeli roads and yes, road accidents true. Very uh, true. And, and stuff as well. So, I mean, that's why Israel's developing technology now mm. that, that helps drivers, particularly on the road, to identify if, if their car is too close or if it's too near to, to move back. Um, but clearly, this is something that, that Israel is prepared for. Uh, can you share with us um, one of the big projects that MDA is doing, and that's building a new um, national blood bank um, in Israel, uh, and how this has to be built underground to actually stop any rockets or missiles? Yes, I can. Uh, firstly, I should apologise for smiling when you said about road deaths, but uh, the reason is I just thought, having driven in Tel Aviv, anybody that's experienced that knows exactly why that is a problem. But in terms of the new project to build the blood, st blood station underground, uh, in recent conflicts, you know, there's uh, a chance that the blood stations will get uh, attacked. And obviously, if they take those out, there's a huge problem. So there's a multi, multi-million dollar uh, work going on to build this enormous facility underground where all the blood will be collected, stored, processed, etc. And that will mean that it will be a lot safer than it is now. And also now the Israelis are now accepting uh, British blood after they are. 20 years. They are, but only for the very young. So people like you and I can't, still can't do it. But uh, they've decided there's enough time passed uh, since uh, BSC for, uh, for the, younger, the younger generation to do it. So that, that's good, yeah. Excellent. And um, Mark, can you also share what experience um, Israeli paramedics dealing with um, terrorism incidents can maybe teach British paramedics who, and sadly until this year, probably haven't been able to deal or deal with a situation such as this because we've had the uh, we've had the Westminster bridge terrorist attack mm. we've had the Manchester arena attack uh, and then followed by the London bridge attack uh, three major terrorist incidents in the, this country what do you think that the MDA can teach our paramedics and our ambulance services in how to deal with a terrorist incident like like what we've seen and also then how to prepare them and help them psychologically for what they've seen and what they're doing. Sadly, and I use that word deliberately, they can teach us a lot because of their experience. I wish it was different, but it isn't. The reality is Israel's had terrorism since its beginning, as we all know, and the paramedics there have grown up with it and deal with it uh, on such a regular basis that I think they could bring phenomenal skills to our own NHS in how to respond to that kind of incident without um, being able to sort of... Um, I don't mean to tra train them medically, because obviously our NHS is phenomenally trained too, but it is a psychological aspect of it, how you deal with somebody that's been blown up lying in the road when all you feel is rage and anger uh, at why somebody could be so downright evil. Uh, that's the kind of experience that they can offer, and uh, it is phenomenal, sadly. 
And also the hospitals, uh, for example, Hadassah Hospital in, in yeah. Jerusalem is, is a world famous hospital um, that treats both Jews and Arabs alike to the, to the same extent. But also the fact that, you know, preparing the hospitals for, say, a mass casualty attack, because, you know, when we saw the Manchester Arena attack, um, the, the, the hospitals in Manchester had to prepare a number of new beds and then had to go into, mm. like, almost an emergency footing in order to save lives and help those who are badly uh, wounded or injured in, in that horrendous attack we saw in Manchester Arena. Yes, again, my perception is that based on the skills we have, it was handled extremely well by the doctors. You know, they're, they're very skillful, our own, our own surgeons. But it is, again, the element of knowing how to deal with it on such a mass scale as Israel's had to do in the past and the psychological knock-on effect. Because there were people interviewed, in, particularly in the Manchester one, saying they were going home just not sure how to feel anymore because, you know, young children have been targeted. And I think if we can ask Israel to help us think about how to train our staff to deal with that kind of thing, because it is sadly on a different level to seeing a child injured in a road accident. That by nature is an accident. Terrorism isn't. Uh, and that's where I think the difference comes. So I'm not saying that our own staff are not able to deal with tragedy. They are. But this is on a different footing altogether when somebody's purposefully done it. Uh, and that's where Israel has, you know, got such experience that we can only benefit from, definitely. Uh, and Mark, doesn't this remind us also that the enemies of Israel also are enemies as well? And this is why we've got to come together as yes. two nations to yes. fight this rise of uh, Islamic terrorism that we're seeing today. Yes, I mean, people say, you know, one day everyone's going to know what it's like to be Israel. And I often think about that watching our own news now. We've got, we're getting to that stage in the United Kingdom. And if we can stand with Israel and say, you know, we now understand what you're going through. We're not just supporting you, we actually understand it. And Israel can say, well, we can help you with that. Then that's got to be, you know, the right way forward. Which goes back to the Hadassah thing, is that I think with our ambulance we want to give, it is more than just saying we care. It's we care and we do. And that has to be and can be reciprocal. I, I know that uh, Christian friends of Mag and David Lom here are, are um, highly appreciative on behalf of the Jewish community and uh, also with the Israeli embassy because you had your 10th anniversary uh, reception yes. at the Israeli embassy. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, our own Christine Dark, who who's, has a program, uh, Jerusalem Exploits, on Revelation TV was, was the main speaker there. She what, was. Mm -hmm. what does it mean, for example, when... Uh, you know, Christians are invited to the Israeli embassy for reception, talking about the work of Christian friends of Mag and David Adom. Doesn't that signify acceptance and also friendship? It does. I mean, we don't do what we do for thanks. Nobody does. We do it because we love the Lord and we want to serve him. But when the Israeli embassy can say to us, come to us for your birthday party, that uh, I, I was really quite choked by that because I thought it just shows how much they do appreciate what we do and how much they care. And when I said to Ambassador Mark Regev, thank you for hosting us, he turned around and said, no, thank you for what you do. And I was quite humbled by that, actually, because I thought, he doesn't know me. You know, I mean, I know him, obviously, from TV, from many an interview. But for him to be able to thank us for what we do was quite, quite moving, really. And it did show that, actually, they really do care. And that's... Um that's good for us to know. Absolutely. And, and how can our, our, our viewers get involved, um, particularly if there are any young, aspiring paramedics who want to get involved in the work of MDA? How can they, can they If they that? contact MDA in the UK, there is uh, a volunteer programme they can do at some point. And uh, I understand that you have to learn 300 key Hebrew words, like blood and pain and so on, so you can have a rough idea what's going on. But they can place you with a crew to spend some time and see how it's done. And although I've only done day shifts, I would recommend that. It's, it's a great experience. Even though, sadly, you've seen people ill, it's fascinating to see how they're cared for and treated. Uh, so, yes, get there. And also, young people can do a lot in helping raise funds. Young people like doing sponsored events and so on. Why not do something, you know, that can, as a sponsored event, that you can then say, we're proud to help raise money for that Hadassah ambulance. Excellent. And, and also, um, Christian Friends of Mag and David Adam is also expanding, isn't it? Um, in terms of, you just uh, appointed someone now to be the main administrator, uh, to take over and, and some other uh, key appointments to expand the, the, the uh, ministry work of CFA MDA. Yes, in fact, since I spoke to you, we've actually appointed two, uh, which just shows how, how much it is growing. So we've one uh, person based in the north and one in the south, and we're really hoping to look after our donors properly as well as uh, hopefully gain invitations to new churches and somewhere we can go and speak. So yes, it really is growing. The Lord is blessing it left, right and centre, and I thank him for that.
Uh, and in terms of our viewers who, who, uh, who like to pray, um, what are the prayer needs of Christian Friends of Mike and Devil to Dom? My, my answer to that is my prime prayer need is that we can witness to the Jewish people that we care and we love them. Yeah. That's it in a nutshell. The money will come secondary to that because the Lord will deal with the money if we deal with the prayer of love and care and support. No, absolutely. And uh, we're down to about uh, three and a half minutes uh, of the programme, Mark. So uh, for me, th this is a, a charity and an organisation that I like to get behind because I know that, uh, for example, because of Israel's military budget and in terms of actually protecting nation, spending money on security, there isn't that money available to spend on Israel's health yeah. service and particularly Israel's paramedics. And it's amazing to think that um, MDA as an organization is funded um, through Jewish communities mm. all the way around the world. Mm. Obviously the biggest ones are in the States uh, and in the United States and also in Canada as well. But the fact that, that Christians can now play a practical role in helping to save lives in Israel as well. And, and showing that practical love, I think is very symbolic and, and also very, very significant. Um, what other ways can we build relationships with Israel and the Jewish community so they know that they're not alone, particularly in this time of rising anti-Semitism? I think one of the best ways to do that is actually to visit Jewish communities or to visit Israel itself and just to go and talk to the people and get to know them. Too many people go to Israel on a tour and they go around all the so-called holy sites, leave, and they never met anybody apart from the waiter, and that's tragic. So I would encourage people, if you are going, get to meet locals on the ground, get to talk to them, understand them as normal, everyday human beings, and realise that they're not, you know, that they are people that have needs as we do. And in our own country, make links wherever you can with the Jewish people and just let them know that they are loved because they don't think they are by and large. Excellent. Uh, and what impact uh, have you personally had, uh, Mark, on some of the members of the Jewish community through the work of MDA, but also for standing up for Israel and the Church of England, which is uh, no mean feat in itself? No, I mean, I've been invited to synagogues in the past and to talk to Jewish people, and I've loved every minute of that, because Jews love a debate. So you go, they say, why are you helping us? Well, I love Yeshua. Why? And you have a fantastic time from then on. Within the Church of England, I have been pilloried at times, but I don't care because... I think what we do is scriptural, I think it's in the Lord's heart, and that to me is what counts first and foremost. And that's why, as we said earlier, I'm very privileged to be in a congregation that supports me in this work and is learning to love Israel too. That We are there in the Church of England, we just need a bit more pushing to the front. Absolutely. Uh, and it, it's, it's great that you are making that stand for Israel in the Church of mm. England, uh, but also not only making the case for Israel, but also the theological case for Israel as well. Indeed. And how important is it that uh, Christians are aware of our theological importance of supporting Israel from what the Bible says? If you don't have the theological importance, you might as well be supporting anywhere. But once you see what the Lord has in store for the Jewish people, what Israel means to him and to his heart, then I think if you can get that right, put that first, the rest will follow. So I do have interests elsewhere in the world, but the prime interest has to be Israel, which is, you know, the apple of God's eye, is it not? Uh, Mark, I just want to thank you so much for being my guest on uh, today's Middle East Report. Well, tell us about me. the wonderful work being carried out by Christian friends of Mag and David Adol. Thank you. And I just want to thank you for watching today's programme and I uh, can say that the MDA do an incredible job in uh, protecting lives in Israel, uh, both Jewish and is Arab lives and it's so important that uh, we actually save lives. So let's uh, get behind MDA, let's pray for their paramedics because they certainly need it in the wonderful job they do in preserving lives. And this song is in dedication to those brave men and women who serve in Israel's ambulance service, known as MDA. <laughs> 